Welcome to part two of gadgets. In the last episode, we made our base gadget to build on top of, so our player will always be interacting with a base gadget of some sort. In this episode, we're going to create our first gadget, and that gadget is going to be a flashlight. So pop over to gadgets, and just like our weapons, right click on base gadget and create child blueprint class backspace and we're going to call this you guessed it to flashlight inside of flashlight let's grab that tab and move it over to the side we're going to need a light source so hop over to add component and we will get a spot light so there are different types of lights in unreal engine this light here is one that works in the fashion of a spotlight so it's throwing its light at a source in one direction as opposed to say other lights which would try and illuminate everything around them in a 360 degree radius we're going to call this flashlight and then we're going to compile and save that now in the event graph we're going to as usual get rid of actor begin overlap and event tick now because we have our interface in the parent class we can right click and type in activate gadget and get event activate gadget and then deactivate gadget event deactivate gadget right click in the event graph and get set is gadget active copy it and paste it because we're going to need two of them this is exactly the same thing we did in base gadget in the last episode just to test we're going to need to do this for every single gadget so tick the first one so when we hit activate gadget it will activate the boolean to tell us the gadget is active so we can differentiate whether we want to turn it on or off the next step is to talk to our flashlight so drag the flashlight in drag off the flashlight and type in set visibility so we want to set our visibility to true when we turn on the flashlight then copy those two over and paste them down below plug them in and set it to false lastly click on the flashlight and down here you'll see rendering visible when we click off visible this will be our default starting point so the flashlight will not be visible when we start the game and then we will turn it on because our gadget will not be active by default and then we will turn it off when we press the button again lastly let's get a print string to make sure that we're firing our code even though there should be a light there we still test with a print string flash light on flash light off this step is optional and that's pretty much it for this flashlight script a few other things we need to do once we've compiled and saved pop over to test click on the blueprints folder let's pop into our hero character in our core folder and in our first gadget slot let's change that to gadget underscore flashlight so now we're going to be using the flashlight in our first gadget slot compile and save that let's go back over to blueprints and gadgets over in our gadget base let's get rid of that test script we set up here so just activate gadget is gadget active and the print string we don't need any of that because now we're testing directly with the child classes keep this because we may need to reference our character in future compile and save that before we test our flashlight it's a bright sunny day and we kind of need a dark room to test the flashlight in so way way back when we built this platform right here what we did is pop over to geometry and drag in a box holding the right mouse button and using WASD will move us around and Q and E will move us up. E going up, Q going down. Now that we have this box, let's thin it out, make it the same as this. 
we were using a width of 50 for this platform. So let's keep our widths at 50. So with this box selected, scroll down again, we'll grab the X coordinate and make it uh, 500. Y coordinate can be 50, Z axis can be 500. Now, because our Z axis is 500, in order to have it resting on the bottom, halve this amount of the Z axis size and put that amount in the Z axis location. So here, 500, half of 500 is 250. So when I put 250 in, then that's pretty much, they are overlapping the smallest bit, but I don't mind that because it means that the player can't see outside of the world through the cracks. I'm gonna move this over to the side, those snaps, or the amount of which I'm moving is a bit too uh, sensitive for me. So I'm going to line it up at maybe about 2,500. And for the next wall, I'm going to change the snaps to about 50. I'm going to drag on the red now. And I just wanna make a little room on the side here so I can actually see the flashlight reflecting. Then I'm going to hold alt and drag on any arrow and that will copy over the wall. I'm going to make this 500 away from the other wall. Y axis is currently 2,500. I'll make it 2,000. I'm paying attention to this number over here as I move them. And then for the next one, I'm going to hold alt, drag across, and I'm going to flip around the values here. So instead of having 500 in the X and 50 in the Y, I'm going to have 50 in the X and 500 in the Y, and that will give me the opposite wall. Dragging to the side. I'm going to leave this portion open for now. Then for the last bit, I'm going to drag again to the middle and I'm gonna flip around the X and the Z. So 500 on the X, and 50 on the Z. And that should just about do it for a little room for us to test out. Now, if you wanna be a little bit fancy and put some materials on this, because you might wanna test some other things in your rooms, pop over down to starter content, click on materials, Pick a material here, but before you drag and drop it, I wanna show you one more thing. Click on any of these edges and you'll see that the edge is highlighted. Hold control, click on the next edge and the next edge. You can see that I'm selecting the edges here, which you might think, okay, that's cool. That means I can select every edge here. Yep, you could. However, Unreal's a bit weird. Sometimes you can see it just happened there. It doesn't want to select too many edges. If I wanted to select these edges and drag a material over, let's say I'm going to use, I don't know, let's go super futuristic on there. If I'm trying to select multiple areas all at the same time, eventually there's going to be a cap. I'm not sure if that's a system resource cap or a soft cap inside of Unreal, but just something to keep in mind because I've been frustrated plenty of time trying to apply material to multiple surfaces only to find out that it doesn't want to let me. So that's one way to do things. The other way is that if you have a material say this material here where it's just the nothing material or this other material and you want to change that material or everything that's using that material, you can do that. I'm going to show you how to do it with this plain material. So with that selected, come down here to geometry and hit select and go select matching material. Here you'll see the world grid material and a none material. So we're going to drag the hex tile over there, everything is now this new material. One more thing, select any of these materials, go to select, select matching material. Now we have all the surfaces that are matching this. Go to alignment and hit align surface planner. I'm not sure if you noticed it, but the material actually changed its orientation so that it matches up on every edge. So if I click off here, you can see it's a seamless integration into the other bits. So if you have multiple, say, floor surfaces and they're not lining up, you can see the cracks, then you would align the surface planner there so that you can't see the cracks. So now let's hit play and we're going to hit one or whatever your first flashlight button is. You can see a little bit of a light. 
appearing on the gun. We're gonna hit one again. We can see flashlight on and off. I'm going to walk over to the room, which seems much bigger than now that I'm looking at it. Hit one, and I can see the light is appearing. The light's a little bit weak though, not very focused. So to fix that, all we have to do is pop into our settings. So let's pop over to gadget underscore flashlight and select the flashlight itself, the actual light. And we have a whole bunch of settings that we can play with here. In order to see what these settings do, I'd recommend doing this from the viewport. You won't see the light itself, but right there we can see, again, just holding the right mouse button and using WASD to move. You can see that that light is massive, not very flashlight-like. So you can see here that we have some angles that we can play with. We can drop down the outer cone angle to 20. And there's even an inner cone. Some lights will have a brighter center and the edges will be softer. You can even do that with this spotlight. So this inner cone angle can be about 10. Hitting enter, we can see that the center will be more bright there. So it's up to you how you want to use that effect. And lastly, I'm going to adjust the brightness to about 20,000. If you wanted to play with the color, you could also do that here, either by moving this wheel any way you want or by punching in the values. But I'm going to leave mine as white for now. Let's compile, save, back to test, hit play, walk over to our room, and I'm gonna hit one. And you can see already from a distance that flashlight's much stronger and much more focused. Obviously it's still extremely bright, but if I was to darken this entire room and it was to look like this, then that effect would be very desirable. Another thing worth noting is the flashlight is centered because it's attached to our B underscore heroes camera. So I've selected it there and it's facing down the X axis. So if your flashlight isn't facing down the right axis, make sure the rotation of your gadget slot and the rotation of your actual gadget are matching up. So you can see here, the flashlight is aiming down red on the X axis. If I go back over to B underscore hero, I can see that because of this red line, my camera and my gun are also on the X axis. So that'll just about do it for this video. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one.